Welcome to Bowser's Fury, the standalone DLC for Super Mario 3D World on Nintendo Switch. Unlike the base game, this is a more open concept kind of adventure, sort of like Mario Odyssey. As soon as I heard that this would be a thing, I knew that there was one question I wanted to answer. How many jumps does it take to beat Bowser's Fury? Note, this is not a plot heavy game by any means, but still. There will be spoilers, so continue at your own risk. Our adventure starts by enlarging Mario's head from the sand, which is doable with just the analog stick. So far, so good. Unfortunately, almost immediately we come across our arch nemesis, platforming. Let's run through what few options we currently have. Taking damage gives no momentum of any kind, and falling into the icky paint-like goop is a guaranteed death. Mario is able to do a mid-air roll, but it is far less useful than Odyssey's counterpart because it doesn't give all that much height, so I don't see it getting us anywhere. There are no power-ups available, and no nearby terrain to work with, so we must jump. Hey, it's Sam from the future here. I just wanted to let you know that the Cat Mario Amiibo is a thing, and if you don't know, the Cat Mario Amiibo can be used with this game, even Bowser's Fury, and when you scan it in, you get the white cat suit which has all the cat features but also invincibility. And I was thinking, wait, is this possible? Can we use this here? Turns out, no, you cannot. Amiibos cannot be scanned in at any point before you meet with Bowser Jr., so that, there you go, back to where we were. That said, we can be tactical about it. A charged crouch jump gives us heights, but you barely go anywhere. A spin jump, on the other hand, gives us a nice mix of height and distance, which lets us get onto the broken ship all in one go. From here, Bowser begins to get uh, furious, and uh, we're expected to travel across the deck, up this ledge, up a few fallen Bowser platforms, and then up some more to the cat shine. No, I don't want that. Luckily, we have terrain that can help. We can use the broken mast or careful movement with the first ledge to get onto the left side railing. Then sprinting into the curved sections can actually give us a bit of upwards momentum. It's tricky, but doable to get to the very front of the ship without jumping, meaning we now must get to the shine. I should note that it is possible to reach the shine's platform with just a single jump, spin jumping onto this block, and then dodge rolling across. However, there is no jumpless way to get up to the shine from here, at least as far as I'm aware. So I did this by using two spin jumps, one to get halfway up the steps and the other to touch the shine. The game takes place in a kingdom of cats. Here, a range of cats float upon a vast cat. Mario never learned to read. Finally, we're heading into the game proper, and Bowser Jr. is here to help. Or not, it's up to you. If you have him help via the settings, he'll fly around and beat up enemies, investigate stuff you indicate with ZR or the touch feature, and collect coins. But it's sort of random because he just sort of has a mind of his own. However, I chose to turn on two-player mode, which lets me control him by using a second controller. While being controlled, Bowser Jr. can travel really, really far away from Mario. He'll teleport back if L and R are pressed, or the game just sort of decides to. It can be a bit fickle at times. His attacks activate question mark blocks, and he can collect power-ups from Mario, which already gives us a lot of flexibility on how we'll approach the islands to come. For this one, Scamper Shores, we can use Cat Mario to claw all the way up. With careful routing and wall climbs, we can reach the first shine with little difficulty. Uh, but then, oh no, it's floating in the air. There is a way to do this, but you might notice the rain, so let me explain that first. At the center of Lake Lapcat is the inky Fury Bowser. He goes through phases of being dormant, which is uh, where everything is sunny and peaceful and angry. 
which brings with it rain, a dark sky, and various changes to the map. As far as I know, this cycle is time-based, but it can take somewhere between 6 to 10 minutes for Bowser to appear. It sort of feels random. Either way, Angry Time can be useful in some places, so when it will be useful, I'll be sure to point that out. Here, I realize that I can reach this cat shine if I carefully get onto the ledge, wall climb up the lighthouse and onto this ledge, which is sort of like the tower's tail, and then fall right onto the shine. You should know, each lighthouse is home to five different shines, three of which require you to leave and come back to a slightly different layout each time. I didn't know this, so I just continued across to Pounce Bounce Isle. The bounce pads of Pounce Bounce Isle are normally activated by jumping, but that's evil. Luckily, Junior's Ground Pound also works. It's a bit awkward to control both of them at the same time because I only have two hands and I, I'm using two controllers that aren't Joy-Cons, uh, but that's a thing. As we head up, there are a few pitfalls to be wary of, though it's more of a pit with no fall. In other words, there are some spots where we cannot fall off of a ledge, which means we're sort of trapped. We can't fall, we can't climb, so we can't really go anywhere. Initially, I worried that we would have to wait for Bowser and take an intentional death, but uh, you can also save and reload the save via the menu, which spits you back out nearby, which I used quite a lot going forward. Also, uh, while attempting this aisle, I unintentionally made Bowser destroy these fury blocks, which held a shine that I later collected. Back on track, with careful dives and climbs, this lighthouse shine is ours. I unfortunately didn't capture all of them on camera, but Junior can collect all five shards on his own, which gave us another cat shine. As you'll come to see, this DLC has a certain pattern to it. Each lighthouse contains five shines, three of which are rewards for some kind of objective, and the other two are always the same, five shine shards and destroy the fury blocks. With five total shines, we can gain access to the Giga Bell, but I couldn't figure out a good way to get to that, so uh, I just went to other stuff first. For now, I spotted a floating shine that looks suspiciously grabbable. Turns out, yeah, it totally is, and I did it on my first try. Yes, I am proud of myself for this. Next, I headed over to Fort Flaptrap, which has a handy cat ramp that lets us climb right up to the main arena. I used this vantage point to start collecting some of the shards using Junior and unearthed the Fury Block shine when Bowser showed up. Then I had to save and reload because of the pit. After collecting the last of the shards and getting that shine, I sent out Junior to bully some of the bullies using the lighthouse as a vantage point. That's easy, but actually grabbing a reward is more difficult. We can't simply walk into it or fall from a nearby ledge, we gotta get more creative. So I tried to use a Bowser block, but it failed. And no jumping means I couldn't retry, so after respawning I thought I'd check out other abilities and then disaster struck. I jumped. Not intentionally, it was a misclick while swapping powers, but I jumped. It saves with every shine, so I couldn't go back and retry it. With a heavy heart, we must increment the jump counter, is what I would say if I was some kind of quitter. Uh, this is more than doable, and in more than one way. So after reloading the area, it swaps to a blue coin challenge, which is time-based. Luckily, Bowser Jr. can again do it all himself, which spawns the shine in the exact same spot as last time. Again, Bowser appeared, but this time I successfully cat climbed up the nearby Bowser block and grabbed that shine jumpless, confirming that the jump is not actually needed at all. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, I swapped to a different profile, played to this part, and redid the bully shine with Cat Mario to confirm that you can actually reach it with a very careful wall-timed swipe midair, so that's officially minus one jump. The next shine I went for was Scamper Short's Fury Block, simply because it caught my eye. I did have to wait around for a bit, but otherwise it was easy to collect. From there, I began to scour this place for shards, sending Junior out to collect them. Suddenly, what's this? A Fury Shadow that looks like Luigi? This is pretty similar to the Shadow Mario Shines from Super Mario Sunshine, so I used Bowser Jr. to defeat the imposter. It's oddly poetic, I think? Anyways, woo, we got a shine. At this point, I set my sights on finally touching that Giga Bell, which wakens every time Bowser gets mad, because we have enough shines. While there are steps in front of the bell's altar, it doesn't get us close enough. We would still have to jump. I expanded my brain and realized that you could actually dive from atop Bounce Pass Isle just like that. After the cutscene, however, the game moved Mario down onto the ground. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, so I did it again sometime later, uh, and I was finally able to Giga Gigantic Dynamax into Giga Cat Mario. As a uh, kaiju, 
we have to face off against Fury Bowser, which at first seemed very difficult, because uh, without jumping, we cannot dodge his Shell Pound Shockwaves, which means I lost my cap form pretty much immediately. Without swiping, no jumping, I couldn't come up with a good way to fight back and lost not long after. I continued my search for Scamper Shore Shards, which was again interrupted by realizing that, oh, uh, this key is an objective. I bring it back down to uh, get another shine, which means Scamper Shores is almost complete. Back up again looking for the shards, I eventually found it, but it was <laughs> eluding me. I realized, oh, this lighthouse is even more better at letting us reach the Giga Bell, so uh, I still had trouble, but I went back into the fight. And I realized if you hang around long enough, the Giga Bell will actually respawn. So I used this, along with my knowledge of platforms, to bait Bowser into landing here, and then walking off the ledge to access his fleshy underbelly, which led to victory. Bowser retreats into the goop, and the next section of the map was revealed, which brings with it a useful ally. Plessy. Plessy is extremely useful, allowing us to travel all across Lake Lapcat with ease. He can also slide across all kinds of terrain, which is extremely powerful. Also, while getting used to Plessy's physics, I spotted this first race. The platforms and boost pads expect you to jump, but reaching the shine is more than doable jumpless. Afterwards, I returned to this island, which is called Slipskate Slope, and realized that you can actually remount Plessy by swiping Cat Mario against this spot of his neck. Also, while on Plessy, dismounting him with ZL gives Mario a nice boost into the air, which lets us access the pipe cannon that leads up to the slope proper. I should note here, um, it is tricky, but doable, to get the ice skate using Tanuki Mario, but I lost it almost immediately. It doesn't really matter, because you could actually take most of the slope on foot with no problem, and Junior can collect all of the shards for a shine on his own. As for the slope shine, it awaits us at ground level at the end. With that, we have more than enough shines to awaken the next Giga Bell, which can be easily accessed by dismounting Plessy right into it. Now that there are two Giga Bell altars in the fight, and we have the power of hindsight, this fight proved much easier than the first. More than a couple bits of train work to do a cheeky ground pound. I'll try spinning, that's a good trick! Our victory, unfortunately, is not enough to reveal more of the lake, so we have to get some more shines. Next, I ventured over to Claw Swipe Colosseum. This aisle contains three consecutive mini-boss fights, each taking place inside this empty, flat arena. The fights are more than doable jumpless, but I have no clue how to get any height without jumping, so actually collecting the shine is a no-go. As such, I ventured away, checking out some other potential shines. Sli <laughs> Slip Skate Slopes Blue Coins, that was a tongue twister, uh, Shine is probably impossible jump list, if not extremely difficult. They're spread across the whole slope, and it's timed expecting you to be moving with the speed provided by the drivable skate. Perhaps a skilled individual or a duo actually playing co-op could move down the slope at speed and collect each coin with Junior, but I definitely can't, so I had to pass. Near the base of the slope is a little arena fight activated by ground pounding a switch. The fight is easy, but I don't see any way to get up onto the block, let alone reach the shine, so again I had to pass that. I then ventured over to Crisp Climb Castle to take a gander at what it has in store. Turns out, lots of verticality with seemingly little to work with. I unfortunately misunderstood what you had to do here, so I left it for later, and uh, we'll come back to it. After exploring for a while, Bowser got mad again, which I used to destroy the two fury blocks around the ruins Gigabell. The smaller one hides the slope's shine, while the other reveals a pipe cannon that sends us to a high elevation shine. Um, it looked really spooky at first with big gaps, but turns out there's just invisible cloud platforms between all of the boost pads, which makes it a, a pretty simple jaunt over to the shine. As for grabbing it, I utilize the nearby spring. If you carefully fall off of the ledge and cat climb onto the spring, and then cancel with the B button, it makes Mario leap into the air right onto the shine. Um, but you may ask, hey, doesn't the B button normally jump? So isn't that a jump? Uh, and, and to that I say, hey, don't bring that kind of negativity in here, because I already did. That's why I booted up my second profile, played to this point, and confirmed that it's possible to get onto the spring 
do a little fling, and dive back into the shine. No B button necessary, so uh, there's no jumps needed at all. Okay, just saying. All right. Heading back out onto open water, I activated another little fight over here near the castle. This one is doable and reachable, as the hexagon platforms are cat climbable, and the shine is just barely cat reachable. I then set my sights on this one suspended in the air nearby. You're supposed to ride the tiered ice flow that emerges near the castle to reach it. I tried dismounting Plessy to reach the shine, but that didn't give enough height. It seemed just out of reach, so we're going to focus on other stuff for now. Back to Scamper Shore, I finally collected all of those shards with Bowser Jr., which nets another shine. Back to Fort Flaptrap, the main area is now full of Magic Koopas, which Bowser can easily beat up. The shine spawns in the same place as the other two, which means it's also collectible. As for Bounce Pounce Isle's second main objective, it's a button-activated platforming challenge. This has the same issue as the previously mentioned blue coins on the slope. It's relatively straightforward and is maybe doable under these circumstances, but not for me, so I just couldn't make it happen. Next time Bowser got mad, I used Plessy to reach a Gigabell and faced off against him to take him out for real this time. His newest move involves rolling around at the speed of ground, which exposes his underside. I was not cat enough to hit him there, but eventually I emerged victorious. Is that a JoJo reference? Woo! This happens to reveal the third and final area of the map, which is centered around the Wasteland Gigabell. The journey up the newly raised ship is doable jumpless and fun. Plessy is the best D. Anyways, after a bit of recon, I dismounted Plessy to get to this large jump pad, which Junior activated, letting us get onto the Wasteland Hub proper. From there, we can use a bit of cat climbing and running to get to Risky Whisker Island. I love these names. The first objective is to track down Fury Shadow Luigi, which Junior can do all on his own for a shine. I then had Junior fly around and get all five shards for another easy shine. After that, I ventured back and over to Pipe Path Tower. This, as you can see, relies on traveling through pipes, which involves no jumping. Once at the top, I sent Bowser Jr. back down for the fifth shard, which gives us another easy shine, which I am glad I did, because that shine opened up the lighthouse, allowing me to travel up and then back down directly onto the primary shine, which otherwise seemed out of reach. This clears the nearby waters, as well as spawning in the opening section of Mount Magmeow. With that, we're also like halfway to the end goal of 50 shines, the minimum needed to beat the DLC, which is pretty awesome. The next place I went was Roiling Roller Isle. We can dismount Plessy to get onto the Iron Steps, which then are cat climbable onwards. Along the way, I began to collect some shards, which lasted long enough for Bowser to have a tantrum, which I used to get the Fury Block Shine. As for the rest of the shards, the only one that actually needs direct Mario involvement is the one near the end hidden by some bombable blocks. The last one I collected to actually get the shine was at the very end. Good thing the uh, cat suit makes platforming so forgiving. With a bit of patience, I made it to the lighthouse platform, um, but then getting to the shine requires a bit of careful wall climbing, which means getting rid of any distractions in the area. <laughs> uh, that makes for another nice and easy shine. With our new vantage point, I spotted a Plessy race down over here, which simply requires us to swim through a fence-filled funnel. T -t tunnel sorry, I'm, I'm going crazy with alliteration. It's doable, even without jumps, which is quite nice. Afterwards, Browser began to rain hellfire upon the land, which also raised the ramp near this floodgate shine, which I decided to grab. It turns out Cat Mario can cat climb up even without the ramp. Nice. Over here, the spin scramble shine expects you to jump? <laughs> what? No. Uh, Plessy took me over, and then I easily cat climbed right up with the dismount. After that, I finally set my sights on Mount Magmeow. Using careful cat physics to scale the straightforward platforming this is what I wish I could say. As it happens, I spent many minutes and deaths attempting to climb up only to get a single shard. We'll be back. <laughs> Uh, the Pipe Tower's second shine involves blue coins. Some careful routing is required to do them in the time limit, but it's another jump of shine. Then, after dying to Bowser's fire, I climbed up once more to retrieve the key. With a Tanuki suit, the journey back down to the cage is relatively easy, just gotta make sure not to drop it into the water. Bam bam boom, shine 33. Venturing back down to the first Gigabell area, 
I spotted a large rabbit, which sprinted across the lake. This blatant disregard for physics will not be tolerated, so I chased him down and confiscated its shine. Back up again, I used Bowser's breath to break the Bowser blocks for another beshine. Afterwards, I decided to try this Plessy race, which is made up of floating platforms. Hard pass. On Risky Whisker Island, I tried to do the feasting on fuzzy shine. This requires us to carry a potted piranha plant around to consume all of the fuzzies, which is doable with a bit of effort. Collecting the shine, on the other hand, not so much. It's elevated at the center of a large-ish platform, and the nearby lighthouse is far too short to give us any meaningful boost, so I just don't think this is possible jumpless. I wasn't even able to wall climb on the metal platform, as it seems to be too thin. From there, I spent enough time hmsting that Bowser arrived to blast the island's fury block for another shine. The next place I went to was this secluded island off to the west, which has a bounce pad capable of getting us into this cloud cannon thing. Uh, this takes us to a sub area, where we're supposed to use the star boosts and jumps to reach the end while taking out every enemy. I tried and tried, but I just don't think it's feasible. While in that area, during a Bowser barrage, I noticed there was another secluded island home to a shine accessible via Bowser ramps. I'm sorry, Plessy, but I cannot allow you to jump either. He disappeared into the muck, and I uh, left my Valiant Steed behind, and powered through the damage by repeatedly using power-ups. Good thing this is a Mario game and not never-ending story, because Plessy respawned at the dock immediately after, letting me use a dismount boost to reach the shine on a hidden island. Afterwards, I had to give him the old Yoshi treatment once more to escape. I hope there's no hard feelings, Plessy. Back at Rolling Roller Isle, the second main objective involves a timed platform challenge activated by a switch. Much like the previously mentioned one involving jump pads, this one just isn't happening. At some point though, I made my way back to the first Gigabell yet again, where I found a crying mama cat. Luckily, her lost penguin, I, I mean cat, is like 30 feet away, which makes for an easy shine, which is also, it's so cute. At this point, I decided I was finally ready to reach that ice flow shine over by the castle. I can't get high enough on my own, and neither can Plessy, so what if? The next shine I decided to go after was by the Wasteland Gigabell. Bowser's fire revealed another pipe cannon, which leads to a familiar shine on a floating island next to a spring. Much like last time, dismounting the spring or using a tactical dive both work, or you could even spring fling back and forth. With that, we've reached 40 shines, which is enough to fight Bowser once more. Much like with the Ruins Gigabell fight, this first one is just a warm-up. We gotta find 10 more shines to reawaken the bells and then fight them for real. The closer we get to our goal, the less peaceful time we will have. After some more recon, I decided to return to Mount Magmeow, and the first shine I got there was hiding behind some fury blocks. Once I respawned, I spent the next far too long trying to get up the mountain. It's harder than it looks, I swear. Back by the ruins, I spotted the fury blocks floating up on an invisible part of Trickety Tower. That looks like a nice and easy shine, so uh, there's no harm in grabbing that now. Then, using the nearby lighthouse, I sent out Junior and had him collect all of the shards. It's not difficult per se, but judging his distance from any of the shards can be a bit tricky at times. Eventually, I got the shine. Now, um, let's try to scale the tower ourselves. Its whole gimmick is that it's invisible unless interacted with, which means I had no clue if the path up would actually be feasible. What's worse, there are some very rude spike throwing spikes along the path. No worries, I have enough power-ups to power through. Oh, well, that's right, Bowser Jr. exists. Whoops, I let him handle him. Uh, after a careful journey with many cat climbs, I reached the top of the tower, fell down, only to realize I missed the shine. I had to do it all over again, but... In the end, I, I got there. After reloading the area, the next trickety objective involves blue coins. Even if I had all of the pathways memorized, which I do not. I do not think I'm fast enough to collect all of them without jumping, so I had Junior do it. Much like with the shards, it's a bit tricky at times, but eventually I got another shine. The final objective of trickety towers is a button activated timed platforming section. Is it doable? Not for me. Pass. 
I realized there was another cat missing, its kitten by the ruins Gigabell. This time, there are three cats missing. One is close by, another is atop the Colosseum's arch, and the last is over by the castle. Unfortunately, I don't think this is doable jumpless, at least at this point. The kittens disappear upon touching water, which is oddly realistic, and uh, the arch kitten is a couple platforms away, which means I really have no way to cross that gap without touching the water. Back to Mount Magmeow yet again. I think this is the third time. Turns out it is doable, just challenging. It's really rough if Bowser gets mad though because there are not many places to hide. The next moving platform is the hardest because you're out in the open for a long time then you gotta move to the next platform without falling. It does work, but it's very goofable, like you can mess up super easily and if at any point you fall, you're gonna hit the lava. And if you hit the lava, it's an auto death which is why this proved to be one of the most challenging sections of the DLC. Eventually. I got to the end, which is an arena where we fight a large metal bully. Even he cannot stand in my way, but the shine, the shine is floating. Gravity, you cruel demon. It's frustrating, but this journey was not in vain, because I was able to collect all of the shards for another shine. I eventually returned to the Colosseum and realized that all of its shards were also reachable, even without doing any of the fights. For the next half hour, I fruitlessly went back and forth and back again trying to find a workable shine. It's worth noting that uh, I was recording this whole thing all in one session in the late hours following the game's release on February 12th. So at this point I was going for about 8 to 9 hours and uh, the sun was beginning to rise outside and I was feeling the gravitational pull from my bed. Still, I pressed on adamant that I would get it done to prove that I could? I don't really know why. Eventually, I ended up focusing on the Wastelands Arena fight. It seemed to have potential, as there were ledges and edges to work with. Despite my best effort, I could not come up with a way to reach the cat shine. I tried the cat suit, tanuki suit, nothing worked, and I eventually lost hope. I just wanted it to be over, I just wanted this challenge to be done, so I jumped. It doesn't feel right or necessary, but that's how it is. A message is ringing out from the Giga Bell. The light of the cat shines can no longer keep Bowser at bay. Great. So with just two shines left, Bowser cannot be contained anymore, which means he is in constant rage mode. Ah, uh, it's the consequences of my actions. So uh, since I grabbed all of the very easy fury block shines already, I now have to deal with non-stop fire falling from all over the sky, and Bowser is trying to snipe me with solar beam. The only place I had an exhausted was the castle. It took me far too long to realize that, uh, oh, hey, the nearby question mark blocks actually contain propeller blocks, which you're supposed to use to get up said castle. So that's what I did. I jumped into one of the propeller blocks and then began my journey up the castle. Surely this revelation would yield more shines. If only I could live long enough to find out. After one of my deaths, I had yet another revelation. Cat Mario can climb sideways and then up. That means I don't need to jump using the propeller which means minus one jump. It seems so obvious in hindsight, but at this point it was like 8 a.m. and I was running on pure determination. In the many minutes that followed, I tried and tried again, often taking damage and losing my power-ups, having to detour to get more cat bells until I remembered that I could save scum to cut down on the tedium. As long as there is a ledge to fall off of, the propeller can get us higher into the air, and slowly, I memorized the path, I learned to time my ascent with Bowser's repetitive attacks, and through trial and error, and error, and error, I finally did it! I got the crisp climb castle lighthouse alliteration shine. <laughs> I did it. There is hope. So this shine removed a bunch of the icky pink like goop around the castle, allowing the fury block shine to be mine. With that, we've done it, we've reached the 50 shines needed to escape this hellish lake, but I couldn't allow myself to end things without erasing that shameful jump I made out in the wasteland. So, the second objective of the castle is another timed button activated platforming challenge, but this time I have the power of cat and flight on my side. I realize that this might not seem like much, but I am 
pretty sure I legitimately threw up my hands and yelled in triumph at this point, because that's the 51st shine, which meaning I can subtract one jump, meaning I can head off to the final battle with a clear conscience. This time, Bowser is full of tricks, but so am I. I've learned his rollout timing. I've learned how to fury swipe. I've learned how to sit behind objects and avoid getting blasted. There is nothing he can do, and I am victorious. But not really, because while Fury Bowser is no longer an issue, gigantic, uninked Bowser is still a problem. He draws forth the Gigabells, trapping their power within a crystalline ball. Now, Tiny, we must walk into Plessy, which lets us automatically get on, and then chase down big ol' Bowser. This fight is a water-based Plessy race. Unfortunately, we cannot jump out of a dive to gain speed, nor can we jump off any of the ramps, which means that the Gigabell is unreachable everywhere except this ramp at the end of the loop. This ramp has enough height to let us hit the ball even without jumping. As such, every time we want to hit the ball, we have to go through the entire loop, making sure to maintain enough speed to actually hit it with that one ramp. Bowser's attacks and intensity also ramps up as we land more hits. Chasing him the intended way across the various ramps is unnecessarily hazardous, which is why I realized that you can actually cut across the lake, causing him to repeatedly leap backwards, which uh, avoids a lot of his attacks. Eventually, when everything was aligned, I got that final hit. Huzzah! Bowser is filled with now just everyday rage, and we're quickly approaching the credits, which means we can answer the question, how many jumps does it take to beat Bowser's Fury? The answer is three, and they're all at the very beginning of the game. I had a feeling things would work out once we got to the lake proper, but this ended up being a really fun challenge. Unlike the base game, you can approach the various islands and shines in whatever order you want, with a lot of different methods being possible, meaning that there are no doubt numerous strategies I have never considered. Whether you choose to take on this challenge yourself or you just enjoyed the ride, thank you for watching. Of course, I'd also like to thank my channel members for their support with a giga-sized thanks to Pseudonymous, Germanger, Achilles Rhodes, and Captain Crayfish for being super fans. I only make challenge videos occasionally, but still, I hope you enjoy this one. I got others for Origami King, Luigi's Mansion 3, the Banjo-Kazooie games, and more. Check those out if you want, subscribe if you're feeling generous, and uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye